Hey man, I heard you broke in the data science. Any tips on how to learn it? Hey, yeah, I did. So in order to break through, what you're going to want to do is rewrite gradient descent from scratch, publish a paper on your low V7. Ideally, you want to be able to train GPT-4 in under 20 minutes. Oh, and you should probably attend some meetups. Yes, uh, maybe three meetups a day and make sure you can code in Swift, Assembly, Java. It doesn't need to be this hard. Let's dive into it. What's happening guys, my name is Nicholas Renaud and in this video, we're going to take a look at the exact process that's going to allow you to learn data science ridiculously fast. Now the cool thing about this is this is the exact same process that I used to go from being an accountant to a data scientist at a large tech company. Now make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm also going to be giving you a free cheat sheet that summarizes all of the concepts and all of the notes discussed in this video. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Now you're probably wondering, what's the first thing I should do to kick this data science journey off? Well, the first and probably one of the best steps that you can take is to begin to learn Python. Now there's a whole heap of different programming languages out there that allow you to build and work with data science concepts. But Python is probably the easiest one to get up to speed. And the great thing about it is that there are a whole heap of advancements being made in Python that allow you to work with some really cool use cases. For example, TensorFlow, PyTorch, and a whole heap of the natural language advancements being made by Hugging Face are available in Python. So it's a great first language language to learn and it's easy to get up and started with. So make sure you take a look at different data types and data structures, how to write functions, how to build classes, just to name a few. Now the other thing that you should probably also do is familiarize yourself with the different development environments that typical data scientists use. Now my best advice for this is to learn Jupyter Notebooks, Jupyter Labs and potentially one other integrated development environment. So you might choose PyCharm or VS Code just to get started. So once you've got a reasonable understanding of Python, the next thing that you wanna be able to do is to be able to identify different types of data science tasks. Think of these data science tasks as different workflows, outcomes, or end products that come as a result of going through the different data science steps. Now, the reason why being able to identify the different types of data science tasks is so important is because it's going to influence the data you collect, the different types of processing that you do, and the workflow that you're actually going to run through for that particular task. In fact, it influences the entire data science process. Now there's a bunch of different types of tasks involved when it comes to data science, and we will cover these a little bit more in the modeling section. But just know for now, some of the most popular ones that you're likely to encounter include churn prediction, sales forecasting, sentiment analysis, image classification, and object detection. Some of these are reasonably advanced, so you might wanna leave these till a little bit later. Now, the best way to find out about a bunch of different types of data science tasks specifically relevant to your industry is to just jump on to Google and to search for machine learning tasks in X industry. This is going to allow you to find out what particular types of tasks and problems data scientists in that industry are currently trying to solve. Now, just as there's a whole bunch of different types of data science tasks and use cases, there's just as many different types of data that you're likely to encounter when you're learning data science. Now, these can broadly be broken down into two key categories. These are structured and unstructured. Structured data typically refers to data stored in CSV files, .txt files, Microsoft Excel spreadsheets, and traditional SQL style databases. Now, when you're working with these types of data, as you're going through your data science journey, you wanna learn how to work with pandas and NumPy. Pandas is a Python library that allows you to read in tabular data and specifically structured data to be able to work with it and build data science workflows. Using pandas, you can create, read, update, and delete different types of data. So the core CRUD lifecycle whenever you're working with data. NumPy gives you the ability to transform and apply a whole bunch of different types of mathematical functions. Now, on the other hand, we've got unstructured data. Unstructured data is a whole big wide world of fun and specifically revolves around image, audio, and text-based data. So there's a whole heap of development happening inside of the unstructured data space. And this is typically where you're likely to encounter things like image classification, object detection, and working with pitch classification, as well as a whole bunch of different natural language use cases. In order to get started with working with unstructured data, for images, you're likely to work with OpenCV or Pillow. 
For audio, it's best to take a look at the SciPy library and learn how to work with spectrograms. And for text, there's a whole bunch of different libraries, but my favorites, which I'd recommend a new data scientist to learn, are uh, NLTK, so Natural Language Toolkit for Python, as well as Hugging Face Transformers. These key libraries are going to give you a solid foundation as to how to approach different types of data when learning data science. So once you've got a good understanding of the different types of data that you're likely to be working with, so remember structured and unstructured data, the next thing that you want to do is learn how to analyze and visualize your data. Now the core thing that you're trying to answer here is whether or not you've got sufficient data of a sufficient quality for a specific use case. So remember everything when it comes to data science revolves around your specific use case or your task. So you wanna make sure that your data is of a sufficient quality to be able to go on ahead and do that. Now, a great way to do this is to first up, get a grounding in statistical analysis. So you wanna get a good grasp of descriptive statistics, analyzing distributions, as well as hypothesis testing. Now, when it comes to descriptive statistics, if you're working with structured data, you're able to do a lot of that using pandas. Now, you can also extend this out. So if you're trying to analyze distributions, I'd highly recommend you get a good grounding in matplotlib, which is one of the most popular visualization libraries used in data science through Python today. If you're working with unstructured data, so specifically audio, you wanna get a good idea of how to transform your audio to a spectrogram. Now, typically you're able to do this using SciPy and then treat it using similar techniques as you would for image-based data. When it comes to image-based data, a great idea is to get a good understanding of OpenCV as this allows you to perform data transformations, augmentations, as well as allowing you to visualize your data and see if it's of a sufficient quality. Once you've analyzed and visualized your data, the next thing that you wanna do is get your data ready for modeling. This is typically referred to as pre-processing. If you're working with structured data, what you're going to wanna do is fill in your missing values, set up your independent and dependent variables and split out into a training and testing partition. These are all pretty standard steps that you're going to wanna learn how to do as you're learning data science. If you're working with text-based data, what you're going to wanna do is learn how to remove punctuation, lemmatize your data. That means taking your words and returning them to the base format, as well as performing tokenization. If you're working with image-based data, particularly with TensorFlow, they've actually got pre-processing scripts that you can actually use to get your data into the right format. Whatever it is, you wanna learn how to pre-process your data really well, as this is going to improve the quality of your model in the final run. So you made it to the good bit. Models, algorithms, and evaluation. This is where you learn to use your pre-processed data and apply different data models and algorithms to be able to solve your specific data science use case or task. Now, I'm going to go out there on a limb and say that a whole heap of data scientists and practitioners want you to spend a whole heap of time learning how each and every algorithm works in great amounts of detail. But my personal opinion is that you're better off spending your time learning how to choose and use specific algorithms to solve and produce the best possible outcome for your data. Now, there's probably tens of thousands of different types of algorithms out there that you could potentially use for your data science use case. But in order to save you a bunch of time, I've gone ahead and linked to the specific ones that I use for specific data science use cases and tasks inside of the data science cheat sheet that I'm gonna to link to later on. So this is gonna save you a whole bunch of time when trying to choose which one to use. Now broadly, machine learning models and specifically data science models and algorithms fall into two key categories. These are supervised and unsupervised. Supervised models tend to have a defined outcome and use something called labeled data. So what you're going to try to do when you're applying supervised machine learning is use a whole bunch of input features to be able to predict an output feature. Now, in this particular case, you need to have labeled data. So say, for example, you're trying to forecast which customers are likely to leave a particular company, something known as churn analysis. You need to have a list of historical customers which did leave the company and didn't leave the company. So you need labeled data to be able to try to perform supervised learning. Now, a couple of other different types of supervised learning include churn prediction, as I was just discussing, 
sales forecasting, as well as sentiment analysis. Now, on the other hand, we have unsupervised learning. So you wanna learn how to apply unsupervised learning as well. Now, some of the most common forms of unsupervised learning include clustering, so trying to group different groups of people, places, and different businesses together, as well as anomaly detection, where you try to find different types of outliers. Getting a good understanding of all these different types of algorithms and how to use them and when to use them is going to put you in really good stead as a data scientist. Now, once you've gone and applied all of these different types of algorithms, you need to learn how to evaluate them. So knowing which algorithms to use and where and knowing how to evaluate their performance are most important when you're learning data science. Now this might be through a whole bunch of different types of metrics, but more often than not, the libraries and packages that you're going to use are going to have evaluation standards and libraries included in them. Now that that's done, the next thing that you wanna be focusing on is deployment and integration. This is what's going to separate the good data scientists from the great. The great data scientists are going to be focused on how they can use their machine learning models and end products to be able to generate positive outcomes for the business or startup they might be working for. Now, in terms of how you might go about learning this, there's two key things that I want you to take away. So first up, learn how to take your machine learning models and deploy them using existing cloud service providers. So this might be IBM Watson Machine Learning, Microsoft Azure ML, or AWS SageMaker. Keep in mind that a large majority of startups are going to have their own tech stack that they may wanna use. So get familiar with that if you have a particular company that you're targeting. Now, the next thing that you should learn is how to implement your machine learning models and products using open source. So this might be building a machine learning application using Django, building an API using Flask, or deploying your model using Fast API. Being able to take your machine learning models and build end products and end outcomes is going to put you head and shoulders above the rest. And this is normally referred to as being a full stack data scientist. Now, last but not least, given the fact that you're now armed with your razor sharp data science skills, it's time to start focusing on some soft skills. Now, by soft skills, what I'm really talking about is domain expertise and presentation skills. First up, domain expertise. Having domain expertise is going to help you an absolute ton when it comes to applying for different data science roles. This means that you've got some actual contextual knowledge as to what's happening in the industry that you wanna work in. So say for example, you wanted to be a data scientist at a bank. Well then what I'd suggest is start reading about the different issues that are facing banks. Are they losing customers? Are they suffering from decreasing margins? What is affecting them that you can potentially use your data science skills to help solve? Now, a great way to get an understanding of this is to read blog posts and news articles about the industry. And once you've done that, take a look at how you might apply data science concepts and specifically the data science tasks that we described earlier to those particular problems. Then my best advice is to start jumping over to GitHub and see if you can find practical examples of how you can solve those problems using data science and your newfound Python skill sets. Now, the second soft skill is presentation skills. So often I've seen absolutely brilliant technicians that are unable to convey their messages to a particular audience. Having great presentation skills is going to put you heads and shoulders above the competition because it's going to mean you're able to articulate different data science concepts and bring it down to a language that a regular business person or someone who's not a data scientist will be able to understand. This establishes you as a thought leader in the field and makes sure that you're able to demonstrate what you've actually done. Now, as promised, I said I'd be giving you access to a data science cheat sheet. So all you need to do to be able to go on ahead and access that is just go to github.com forward slash Nick Knock Knack forward slash data science cheat sheet or go on ahead to my GitHub account and type in data science cheat sheet and it's going to be there for you to download for free. So check it out and let me know what you think. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of when I release new videos on data science, data science tutorials, machine learning, deep learning and all that data good stuff. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.